Oh, welcome back. Thank you for being here. Oh, we're having fun today. And the fun's going to continue right now because we don't want to freak you out. But 4th of July is almost only, I should say, two weeks away. And you might be looking for a recipe or two to impress your friends because, hello, you can have them over now. Here with a festive family treat is our good friend Stephanie Hansen from The Weekly Dish. Hello. <laughs> did you just come out of the bed? Where, where, where were you? Where, where, where did you just pop in from? I'm very excited because I heard your Nanook ferret story. That's my favorite story, even though rest in peace, Nanook. I know. I know that you love that story, and people think I'm making it up. But it's very true, and it was, uh, yeah, anyway. Um, when anything starts with I had a ferret, I'm all in. Yeah. Um, Steph, that's a mighty large mixer in the foreground there of your <laughs> shot. <laughs> like, I'm barely paying attention to you because the mixer, <laughs> it's, that is, the, it, it's, it's, the proportion makes it look like it's four times the size of you. It probably is, but we're using this mixer to make whipped cream because we're making a special summer cake that I made with my 12-year-old niece this weekend, and she loved it. Is this, I don't want to be overly dramatic about this, but this is a family recipe, right, Steph? Yes, yes, okay. but it's so easy, it's kind of embarrassing. But everybody loves it, so it doesn't matter. Okay, what is it? Okay, so you're just going to put a little wax paper or something down on your tray, and I'll show you why in a minute. But you make a white cake, okay? Okay. So here's our cake and you put it down and all you're going to do is you're going to basically frost the cake with whipped cream and I've stabilized the whipped cream so it's got a higher thickness to it. How do you do by that? Using how, how do you stabilize it? Yes, I use this magic ingredient called cream of tartar. I never knew what it was and basically it's just a stabilizer so you can see it's making really nice fluffy whipped cream. And I also added confectioner sugar so that it tastes good. And I'm going to put a bunch of berries on this cake. And this is, we had it just last weekend with strawberries, but I'm going to make like a 4th of July version because the red, white, and blue. Hello, Steph, it's beautiful. I'm laughing because we can barely see the cake because of the blender. <laughs> oh, okay. Because of the mixer. Here. We'll get rid of the mixer. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. There, now can you see now the cake? Now we, <laughs> we can see you. Yes, now we okay. can see you, sweetie. Okay. Well, you know. So I what know. I'm doing is, is I'm putting blueberries in the middle, and then I'm going to put like a ring of strawberries. And you can really do whatever you want. I just cut the strawberries in half so okay. they lay flat. Look at your and cake stand. Look at your cake. That's a, is oh. that an antique? It's not, but it looks like it because it's a replica. Oh, okay. It's amazing though. So I'm just gonna decorate this. And when we made it this last weekend, we didn't frost the sides. We kind of left it open so you could see the pretty berries inside. Okay. But you can really do it either way. So, okay, we've got our ring of fruit in there, right? Can okay. you see that? Now we have cake number two. And you're just using, we're just, what cake? You're just using the Betty Crocker st stuff? Yeah, white box cake, it's so simple. Oh, but wow. this is going to look fancy. Okay. So then we're going to put our whipped cream on the top. And we're going to, I don't even have like a special bakery spreader because I'm not official. I'm just a home cook lady. Yeah. But like, honestly, we are going to make this look incredible. It tastes great because it's super light. And in the summer, you don't want super heavy desserts. No. It also, like, my niece was so excited to decorate it. She made it all pretty. And, you know, when you're baking with your family, you just want it to be fun. Yeah, especially in the summer. When I mean, and we're so excited to get together, finally, that you, oh, you, I know. you, wanna, you wanna do stuff outside. And, well, I mean, this you should probably do inside. But how many layers is this stuff? It's just two, but if you were feeling fancy, I mean, you literally could make four. So you could make two cakes and have four layers. Like, you be you. Do your thing in the kitchen. Baking is like, I like baking, but I'm not the best because I'm not super precise. I'm a little more throw-it-together type person. Yeah. But this recipe, people just, I mean, I served it to 20 people, one cake. I got 20 slices out of it. People loved it. People were asking me for the recipe, and I was a little embarrassed to say, well, just make a white cake and then stabilize some whipped cream and put it all together. But 
for the 4th of July, it's just going to be epic. Well, and I was going to say, Steph, the guests will never, the, the guests at your party don't have to know that it's soups easy. No, I always tell the truth, though, because I can't oh. lie. I should lie. Well, I should be like, oh, my gosh, it took me days to make this cake for you. It's not so much lying, okay, Steph. So it's omitting facts. It's omitting facts. <laughs> <laughs> or alternative facts, I yes. think, as they like to say. The recipe's on the okay, screen, everybody. So, yeah, so the top is done, and you can see the layers. Now, if you want to get fancy, you just put some whipped cream on the sides and frost it like you would a regular cake. Now... <laughs> it's going to take me a little bit to get this done, but yeah, it's and all the right. lights are melting it a little bit. But so see, there you go. So you can just kind of, I made one that's on my Instagram at Stephanie's Dish, and there's also a recipe for you. So if you just take your time, you can kind of fill in those you, areas. But I mean, it's cute. It is. And it's. It, 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 I do like the ease of it. Yeah, and if you feel like you, if you want to do like a square cake, you could. So just like a eight and a half by 11 or a nine by 13 sheet cake you could do. Yeah. You could also do like a sheet pancake if you have a lot of people coming. This you is can great. make it fancier for adults. You can add sour cream to the whipped cream or you can add mascarpone and that gives it a little more richness. I love but, it. So see, it's pretty fancy looking. Fancy, but easy. Fancy, yes. but easy. That's perfect. Yes. Okay. And Jace, if you were here, I would serve you a piece. Kendall, you too. Oh, I haven't been invited to your house yet, but I look forward to that. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't come to my cabin because I had an outhouse. So yeah, you know. I just, yeah, I'm not all about that. Anyway, Stephanie's hanging out. Uh, when we come back, it's festival season. And you know Stephanie's famous for her lists. Well, she has a list of these festivals you need to go to. We'll be back after this. <laughs> Welcome back, friends. Hanging with our good friend, Stephanie Hansen. Hey, Steph, have you ever been to uh, the Peppermint Twist in Delano? Of course. They have the best creamy cones. Okay. We just had the raspberry shake. That, oh, look at that, Steph. You did that in the commercial. I did. I made it fancy for you. That is beautiful. Anyway, uh, the, I fully endorse the raspberry shake. From the peppermint twist, that is the it's work. Excellent! It's one of Stephanie March's favorite spots. As it's my radio partner, she loves it. As it should be. Okay, uh, it is time for summer festivals, and we can actually well go this year, which is great. Uh, and I know you're excited. Look at your face; you are very excited. Okay, tell us about some of your favorites. Yeah, I'm super excited. Stone Arch Festival is this weekend, and it is like the return to festival season. I, I happen to work on this festival a little bit, and I can just tell you to get this festival going in light of COVID has not been easy. So I'm really excited that Stone Arch is back. It is on the other side of the river this year. So it's on West River Road. It's normally been on Main Street. They moved it because of construction. And I think the site is gonna end up being beautiful. It's a free festival, 150 artists, there's culinary artists, there's music. It's going to be like it always should have been since before coronavirus. It's in its 26th year, I think. So that's Stone Arch. You are and right. Up, you are right on that one. That's right in my neck of the woods. And it's what a beautiful setting. I mean, you're not going to get much better of a setting for a festival than that, right? It's so gorgeous. No, and it's just it's like it's very urban. It's right in the middle of the city. It's right near all the homes. So it really feels like it's from Minnesota, yeah. people from Minnesota. It's a good gathering to start the summer. Next. Um, another fun one is Summer Jam, which is gonna be out at Canterbury. And that's a concert with Carrie Underwood performing. And again, just to get out to Canterbury and see live music again, they're gonna have a lot of shows this summer. So that's exciting. And then Pride is back on July 17th. They moved the date because they were scrambling to get some things together because again, with COVID, nobody knew what was gonna happen. Yeah. And Pride is just a fun way to celebrate everybody being who they are, who they love. And it's one of my personal favorite events. I know, Jace, you are very into it, too. Yeah, I'm going to miss, and I get why they didn't do it. I am going to miss the parade. Because, I mean, yeah. I like the festival, but the parade is fun. So we had an idea on the radio show this morning. 
I'm just going to go to headquarters and and uh, put the message out there. I think uh, all of uh, I think the gays should just infiltrate a lot of small city parades. You know what I mean? Just I all- love it. <laughs> There's the Ely Fourth of July parade, so come on up. But I'll be going to have to use the outhouse. I'll be there. Yes. Okay, another great festival up here in Duluth is Arden Bayfront Park, and that's August 19th and 20th, and it's in Bayfront, and it's art, music, culinary crafts, and then we have um, We Fest coming up. That's a, the like one of the first big concerts that's going to be happening, and yeah. that's a country concert up in Detroit Lakes, and that will be at the first weekend of August, five, six, seven, and then. Seabirds is going to be back, the fall festival with the pumpkins and the corn pit and the maize. Okay. They are going to be starting the second week of September and going through the end of October. That any of these festivals can happen is just a joy to behold yep. as a small business person and someone to have all these artists and these makers. I mean, they haven't been able to sell their art for 18 months. This is going to be awesome to invite the jewelry makers, the yep. candle makers, the woodcraft people, the fine art. They're all going to be there. By the way, I will end on a compliment. Your hair game is uh, on fire today. It is, <laughs> it is very fair Fawcett. It is very. I, I got a new haircut, and I don't really know how to style it. So I was like, hey, the 70s called. They want their hair back, but maybe it's working. Um, I don't know. It's totally working. Don't change a thing. The great Stephanie Hansen, everybody. For more information, head to her website, stephaniesdish.com. We'll be back celebrating 10 years of Bridesmaids next.